What's up guys, it's your boy, Barca boy 103 today we're going to be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours, a lot of big news to discuss. Firstly, big shakeup is happening in the full back positions. As you all know, the club went on a right back and a left back and both the plan A and the plan B has now been set for Barcelona. In the left back position, Marcos Alonso, of course, is the plan A, but there is complications in registering him, and now the plan B option in Javi Galan has been reactivated. The club now are in Tacos of the Vigo, and on the player's side, to see if the signing is possible this summer. In the right back spot, now on priority is Juan Foyt, but of course, he will be expensive, and coming to agree with Villarreal will be difficult, and now the plan B, instead of Thomas Mounier, which we all thought it was over the past week or so, the plan B is now Hector Bellerin. The club are clear they want to sign two fullbacks, one on the right hand side, one on the left hand side. The question now is who will it be? Alongside, of course, the club do want to sign Bernardo Silva. We do have a big update on the situation as well. But of course, for all these players to sign this summer, players will have to leave the club this summer. Firstly, Oba is looking closer and closer to Chelsea. The deal is very, very hot advancing. Chelsea made a strong bid to Barcelona over the past 24 hours. I do have those numbers for you. It does look like that Alba will be going to Chelsea as his exit frees up FFP for Barcelona so, so much. We have an update on Des, Memphis, Frankie de Jong, also Pablo Torre's exit on loan. And finally, the situation of Antoine Griezmann has been heating up over the past 24 hours. There is a big battle between Barcelona and Atletico Madrid on what the price should be for Antoine Griezmann. As you all know, he's out on loan currently, but could return back from loan this coming summer in 2023. The club don't want him. They don't want his salary. I thought Madrid do want him, but they don't want to pay that 40 million euro by obligation and therefore are not playing Griezmann to meet those statistics and make that buy option by obligation, causing Antoine Griezmann to return to Barcelona. We have the whole entire case on lockdown. We'll go through the numbers, of course, and see the possibility of that situation. But before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button down below. Let's try to get the 300 likes in this video. Be very much appreciated. Also, if you're new, Make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already and let's get into it. Now before we get into the video, this video is sponsored by Number One Foot. Number One Foot is one of the best replica football jersey websites on the market. They have fantastic qualities at fantastic prices. I ordered some the other day and I got the treble winning jersey for Barcelona in the 14-15 season. The quality is absolutely unreal at a fantastic price. Look at the badge on the jersey, it is fantastic. You have the Nike logo as well looking brilliant. It has the the right tags, the right size, the right material, and it's at a fantastic price. And on their website, they do have the new Barcelona kit for this season with the Spotify logo. You can pick what badge you want on the sleeve, La Liga, Champions League, you can pick whatever number you want, whatever name you want on the back as well. And again, the material is absolutely unreal. Here I have the 2007 Champions League kit for Barcelona. As you can see, it has the UNICEF logo, the Nike, the Barcelona badge with the camp new name around it. And if you use the discount code BOY at checkout, you do get 15% off your final order. That is B-O-Y. Use it at checkout, 15% off, and all orders over $80 get free shipping as well. So go down below, top link in the description, and get your new football kit today. Let's start off with the transfer news over the past 24 hours. Now, the first player that we have been linked with is Javi Galan in the left back position now this has been blowing up over the past 24 hours and the news actually broke from the celta vigo media they came out saying that barcelona are planning to make a strong offer to celta vigo for having a land in the coming hours he is a big objective for barcelona i'm sitting there thinking what the bloody hell is going on? We have a full agreement with Marcus Alonso. Why are we going for Javi Galan? And they got more confirmation from Javi Mingel from AES. He came out saying that Barcelona will make an offer of 9 million euros to Celta Vigo for Javi Galan. Personal terms, of course, will not be a problem. And he is ready to earn half 2 million net per year of what Alonso would be earning at Barcelona. So apparently Barcelona are now looking at having a land as an option because they're having difficulties registering Marcus Alonso who will be earning around 4 million euros net per season where having a land will earn half of that and he'll be more easy to register apparently. Now I'm wondering 
What's that gonna happen to left back position? Will Alejandro Balde leave? Will Jordi Alba stay? What's gonna happen there? Have Miguel came out saying that if Barcelona sign a new left back, Jordi Alba may lose his place in the team as the club currently prefers Alejandro Balde in the left back position. Now that's of course the club, not specifically Xavi. I think if we do sign a new left back and we decide to keep Alejandro Balde, which I cannot really see to be honest, I think Jordi Alba definitely will start off the post transfer window area at Barcelona as a third choice left back. But I think Xavi would still like to keep Jordi Alba. But again, the Javi Galan rumors are getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Mateo Marito and also Oscar Mendez, one of the top reporters around Celta Vigo, who of course both write for Olivo, they came out saying that Javi Galan is more than an option for Barcelona due to the problems to close at Marcos Alonso because of FFP. His release clause is 18 million euros, but the offer would not reach that amount. Also, the offer would not be too far from it as well. Galan's salary would not be a problem for Barcelona, and the player's open to making the next step in his career. Ball is starting against Real Sociedad, though, for now, will not change the plans to strengthen the left back position. However, Celta Vigo will not make it easy for Barcelona to sign Javi Galan. I'm spelling here a Juan Foy 2.0, another player who will be, you know, coming to Barcelona and making us stronger. But again, their parent club is asking for the release clause. We do this since what? Back in January, that's how the Vigo are asking for the 18 million euro release clause of Javi Galan to let him leave. But the club are confident they can get him for less than that. Helena Codes from Cope came out saying that Xavi admires Javi Galan. He was a plan B, but the options now gain strength because Marcos Alonso's arrival is getting complicated. Javi Galan's release clause, of course, is 18 million euros, but it is believed that he could leave for around 10 to 12 million euros. I'm all over this man. Oh my god, if we get having a good over Alonso, I might celebrate shirtless. Unbelievable. Of course, the reason why is that we cannot register currently Marcus Alonso with FFP. Apparently, he earns around 4 million net per season. Uh, we don't have enough room for that. Having it, I would earn about half of that, but he would cost, of course, a few million euros extra in that transfer fee. But as I told you guys in the last transfer video, Barcelona has money, but the only problem right now is registering players with financial fair play in La Liga. I'm I'm in dreamland right now. If we can vent Alonso for Javi Galan, that would be fantastic. But of course, keep in mind that Alonso is still the priority for Barcelona. Just the option B of Javi Galan is gaining more and more strength. So I'll have to wait and see. But Barcelona have reactivated their interest in Javi Galan over the past 24 hours and could go for him due to the comp. And could go on and they could go on and sign him due to the complications in the Marcus Alonso deal. Now along with a new left back, the club are also looking for a new now along with the new left back, the club also want to sign a new right back this summer before the transfer window ends. And the plan B option also currently in that position is now clear. And it is Hector. Bellerin. Now, Sport have come out saying that Barcelona is asking Hector Bellerin to wait until the last few days of the window. As the days go by, his option is gaining more strength. Again, the reason being is that the first option, Juan Foyth, is becoming too expensive for Barcelona in the sense that Villarreal do not want to sell. They are asking for his 42 million euro release clause, but the club only want to pay around 30. If they can't sign Juan Foyth, Hector Bellerin is the backup option so you're probably right now all over the place i know you guys you know 20 uh fullback options let's take a breather and let's take a look at it gerard the mirrors come out saying that barcelona want to reinforce both the left back and right back position before the transfer window ends as of today the options are as follows in the left back position marcus alonso number one having a land number two in the right back position juan fourth number one hector bellerin number two again Clear as day, Marcus Alonso, Juan Foyth are still playing A for Barcelona. If the club can pick any, you know, realistic uh, fullbacks right now in the world, they're picking Juan Foyth and Alonso to come in. But if one of those deals fails, we do, of course, have backup options for Alonso. Plan B is Javi Galan. And for Foyth, plan B is Hector Bellerin. Now, what I think will happen, if I could pick, you know, the four options, I would go, of course, Javi Galan and Juan Foyth. I think the Bellerin one is a bit of a risk as Barcelona pretty much cheaping out so they can spend probably more money on Bernardo Silva if they freaking make a move for him. We only got, what, eight, nine days left of the window. But I think right now the priority for the club in terms of signing is, of course, 
fullbacks. Of course, the priority I would say right now at the club is departures because, of course, you still have the red shirt Jules Kunde. But in terms of signing, it is fullbacks. Well, how we see what the club do? I think, to be honest, we could sign both Juan Foyth and Hector Bellerin in that right back position if Des leaves. But they're coming in, of course, on a free deal, most likely. They still earn a few, uh, earn a lot because he's coming in on a free. But in the left back spot, again, Alonso is still the priority, but having Lance's option now is becoming more and more likely due to complications in the Alonso deal in terms of registering him with FFP. So we'll wait and see. Again, the full, the plan for the full back position right now for Barcelona is absolutely clear. The question now is who will be signed. Now, despite the fact that there's only around nine days left of the summer transfer window, the operation of Bernardo Silva is still very much possible. Now, over the past 24 hours, we've been getting a lot of indication from the UK media saying that Bernardo Silva now is officially no longer for sale. And also, Man City are now in Barcelona to, of course, face Barcelona tomorrow in the ALS trading match for Juan Carlos Untue. We saw a video of Pep Guardiola and I think Ferran Soriano, who's one of the board members at Man City, going to the match against Gerona. Of course, they own a Gerona football club. And the Ferran uh, Soriano was asked, oh, are you going to sign Bernardo Silva? He was asked by Jose Alvarez from El Trinquito TV. And he said, no, Bernardo Silva will be staying now. So that brought the mood down a lot from Barcelona fans. But again, what you're seeing from the club, you know, selling a Bamiang, Frankie, Memphis, all this sort of stuff doesn't make sense. It is all aligning with the fact that the club is desperate to sign Bernardo Silva and Xavi is dreaming of it. Now, Gerard Romero has come out saying that Bernardo Silva's topic is still very hot. Bernardo's wife plans to visit some homes in Barcelona in the next few days while they're in the city. And again, the signing is still very possible. Now, also, Gerard Romero came out in the last video. I told you guys that if Frankie Young reduces his salary or leaves the club, we can sign and register Bernardo Silva. And also, Javi Miguel confirmed this as well. He came out saying that Barcelona will sign Bernardo Silva if Frankie Young reduces his salary by 50%, or leaves the club this summer. Watch the space, I would say. The club right now are making so many movements that are pointing in the direction of Bernardo Silva. Will City sell him in the last 10 days, 9 days, 8 days of the window? I'm not quite too sure, but if we don't put a bid in this week, I think it's over. I think by Sunday, if we're not talking with Man City, at least I can't see this happening. So that's why the club right now are moving very quickly on departures. They want to get Bernardo Silva in. I still think it's possible. possible. I'll probably put it at 50 50 to be honest because the ambition of the player is very, very clear. I think if we put a bid in, he'll request for the move, and then Pem Gordiel will say, let him go. Because, of course, the board members can say, oh, he's not going to go, he's not going to go. But they worship Pep. If Pep says, let him go, they will do so. They will listen to Pep Guardiola, no problem. And again, they can say no in public, but internally, it could be completely different. Again, once he said no in public, Jordan Miro still came out saying that Bernardo Silva is still very possible. The operation is still very hot. We saw, of course, a few months ago, we were asked about Lewandowski to Mateo Aleman and Joao Borda. They all said no, and we ended up signing him. So, of course, it's a bit more complicated, I would say, but... We'll have to wait and see, but this week, will we be for Bernardo Silva? He wants to move, Barcelona want to sign him. The question now is, when will Barcelona put in that first initial offer to Man City and Bernardo Silva, and how long will it take? Now, on the topic of midfield, there's a midfielder who Barcelona want to sign next summer in 2023 as a direct replacement for the outgoing, most likely in 2023, Sergio Busquets is Martin Zubimendi. Catalonia Radio came out saying that Martin Zubimendi is the chosen one to replace Busquets in 2023. Now, it's not going to be that easy, of course. He's a 60 million euro release clause right now. He's looking to extend his contract with Real Sociedad and bring that up to 100 million. So, probably be available next summer, I'd say, for around 60, 70, maybe 80. We've been hearing two names for that boost guest replacement, Ruben Neves and Martin Zubimendi. And we saw Zubimendi the other, the other day, of course, in La Liga. I thought he played very well in the match. He shows signs of boost gets how he understands that single pivot role, but again, it's going to be a big risk signing. But as we all know, the club, and more specifically, Chavi, loves the player. We've been linked with him now for months and months and months, and looks like the club will go for him in the summer of 2023. Let's now discuss the players who have been rumored to leave Barcelona over the past 24 hours. And as you all know, there is a lot as the club need to make room in FFP in the wage bill and makes the departures happen before the window ends next week week first name of that barcelona and chavi both went out the door by the end of the summer is serginio des ben aid came out saying the club and chavi do not want serginio des at the club any more gerard Romero came out saying that barcelona want to include serginio des and one of the operations to sign a fullback for fourth bellerin alonso or even javi galan 
Now, it's looking at this, I'm thinking, I think Des would probably go to Arsenal. He'd probably go to Chelsea. Would he go to South Vigo? Probably not. Villarreal, maybe. I think that Villarreal deal could be a way out. You can offer Des plus 10 million or plus a few million to get fourth. I think Villarreal would definitely study that option. The question would, it would be, would uh, Des say yes or no? For Bellerin, he's going to Arsenal look terminate Bellerin's contract. We'll sign him. We'll give you guys Des on a discount. Maybe you could do that. With Alonso, same thing. Give us a discount on Alonso. We'll give you a discount on Des. For, for having in land, I think there is absolutely 0% chance that Des would say yes to go to Celta Vigo. But the club are trying their best to get rid of him in the final few days of the window as fast and quickly as possible. But again, on the Des side, he is remaining firm on wanting to stay at the club this summer. But Naid came out saying that Junior Des does not think about stopping training. He says to his entourage, I will return like a beast. As you all know, on his Instagram, Des has been posting every day, hashtag beast mode, him in the gym, training and working out. Again, if we um, sign Bellerin and keep Des, I would not mind that. Same with Juan Fourth. If we keep, if we sign Fourth and keep Des, I personally wouldn't mind that. But again, the club do not see it that clearly. They want to get rid of him. Chavi does not have faith in him. Does the club? But Des wants to try and stay and prove them wrong, of course. Which, to be honest, can't really blame him for. So we'll wait and see with Des. I think. With extra fullbacks coming in, I think it could lead to his departure. But again, he will have the final say. I think he has three years left in his contract. So apparently, the entourage are asking for Barcelona to, to sell him for less money. The club wants him right now for around 20. They're saying, look, no one wants to get you. No one wants to sign Des for 20. Rain down your asking price. We'll wait and see. Again, in the last few days of the transfer window, anything, and I mean anything, can happen. But it's very, very clear that the club, the sporting sector, and Chabi do not trust Des and want his exit this summer. But the player is refusing and he wants to stay this summer. Now, a player who is pretty much guaranteed to leave the club this summer if he can find a new club to go to is Memphis Depay. Kind of syrup come out saying the termination of Depay's contract has been agreed and also the conditions with Juventus as well. According to the player's entourage, Juventus economic area here to get the green light to the operation. The decision will depend on Juventus. Depay is now waiting. Mateo Marito also came out saying that Memphis Depay is asking Juventus for a salary of 8 million per year plus bonuses and Juventus will meet with Depay's representatives today to find a solution and make the final decision. Rodney Miro also came out saying that Memphis Depay right now is waiting for the green light from Juventus to make his departure from Barcelona. You might be wondering, what's taking Juventus so long? What are they thinking about? Juventus are now deciding between two strikers, Memphis Depay and also Milik from Marseille. DeMarcio has come out saying that Juventus have reached a full agreement with Marseille in principle for the loan of Milik. It will cost a 2 million loan fee with an option to buy to 8 million euros. And now Juventus will decide which striker to sign. Will they sign Milik or Memphis Depay? Maximiliano Allegri will make the final call. I mean, <laughs> am I in cuckoo land here? Are we really comparing Memphis Depay to freaking Milik? With, uh, with, you know, the future of a bad man, which we'll talk about in the next section, I kind of hope they choose Milik just so we can try and keep Memphis, but you cannot be that dumb. Memphis is, first of all, way better. Way, way better. Secondly, you can play on the wings and up front and also as a second striker. Thirdly, I think the operation in total will be cheaper because he'll be earning, of course, a lot of money, but he's coming in on a free deal. You're paying $2 million at least for Milik plus his salary as well. I mean, I think uh, Memphis Apai is younger as well. What is there to think about? If I was a Juventus fan, this is going to be, and this was a you know discussion, I would be fuming. But from the Barcelona perspective, of course, we'll just have to wait and see what Juventus do decide. They will make that decision in the next 24 to 48 hours. But again, Memphis Depay and Barcelona have reached a full agreement on the termination of his contract. All the Pai has to do now is find a new club to go to, and then his contract will be terminated, and he'll walk out of the club this summer as a free agent. Now, along with Memphis Depay and the striker who's also on the verge of leaving the club this summer before the window closes is Pierre Amrick Aubameyang to Chelsea. Juan Marti and Alberto Rojo Relivo broke the big news yesterday. They came out saying that Barcelona and Chelsea are in very advanced negotiation for Pierre Emerick Aubameyang for a fee of around 22 million euros plus 5 million euros in variables for an overall package of 27 million euros. There is optimism that the deal could be done in the next few hours. 
Uh, I'm not a fan of this, of course. I'll give you guys my opinion. Just give you one second. Also, Pletigo from Sky Germany came out saying that Barcelona and Chelsea are optimistic to complete the deal in the coming days for Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. The player has agreed personal terms and the Blues are expected to pay around 20 million euros plus bonuses for the Gabonese striker. Romano also came out saying that personal terms with Chelsea and Aubameyang are now fully 100% agreed. Again, I'm, I think it's a big risk from Barcelona. If you sell a Bamming in Memphis, will you go for another striker or not? Because you, if you're trusting Ferran Torres and answer to play up front, you must be smoking some fufu, some, something good, because there is no way you're trusting Ferran after that freaking stinker that he had against Sociedad. And we all know that Ansu Fati is much better on the wings. Now, we do have some positive news. Gerard Miro came out saying that Barcelona want to be patient with the Batman situation. They still want to sell him for around 30 million euros, but his sale will most likely happen because he will free up FFP like no tomorrow. R Romero said that if we sell a Bamiang, we can register Kunde and also a new fullback as well. So for in terms of FFP, selling a Bamiang is a gold mine for Barcelona. Now, I'll speak about this more if his departure happens, but I think with a Bamiang, there's like 95% pro and then 5% negative in a sale. The pro, age, money, salary, comes in for six months on a free deal. We paid him basically nothing from January until now. It's a win-win, also for FFP. The con for me is squad depth. I think, again, after the World Cup, a Bamiang would be so crucial for Barcelona because, of course, Lewandowski, Ansu Fati, Ferran, Usman Dembele, Rafinha are all going to the World Cup. We know who isn't, Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, and I feel like after that World Cup, from being probably you know end December to middle and uh, middle beginning of February, he will be so so key for the club. Having a player like him off the bench is any team's dream. But of course, Aubameyang is happy. He'll be the backup on the, at Barcelona or starter at Chelsea. He's good either way. It's now up to Chelsea and Barcelona to try and find an agreement. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. But again, his move is advancing and pretty much all signs right now are saying that Aubameyang will be going to Chelsea in the next few days. Now another Barcelona player who could be joining Pierre Emerick Aubameyang at Chelsea is of course Frankie de Jong. As we all know at some point this week they will be meeting with Barcelona and Frankie de Jong's agent to come to a final solution either leave the club this summer or reduce your salary. Now in terms of play, uh, clubs that he's been linked with there have been quite a bit over the past 24 hours. Firstly, the Telegraph have come out saying that Eric Ten Hag has convinced Manchester United to spend extra money to sign Frankie de Jong. The representatives are expected to travel to Barcelona this week to try and complete the signing. Now, I told you guys a few days ago that Man United after signing Casemiro are now out of the Frankie de Jong race but apparently now they're right back in. So United now is an option and also possibly Chelsea as well. Now after Chelsea lost to Leeds 3-0 over the weekend, Thomas Tuchel was asked about signing a new midfielder and he replied by saying, no, I'm good. Chelsea Thomas Tuchel coach said in the post-match press conference that the team does not need to sign a new midfielder this summer. He's had with Kova uh, Kovacic, Kante, Gallagher, Loftus-Cheek, Jorginho. Of course, they had a few injuries over the weekend, but with everyone fully fit, he is happy with his midfield so I of course leave the question if Frankie Neon does decide to leave the club this summer in the next you know few days where will he go Gerard the Miro dropped the bombshell and I tell you what I am shitting myself seeing at this news he came out saying Gerard the Miro of course that Bayern Munich are now entering the race to sign Frankie de Jong and they could sign Frankie de Jong on a loan move what the fuck he's comparing this as well to the Coutinho operation Look, we sent Coutinho out alone because he was absolutely dog crap for us. He played on the left wing, played 60 games, and had, what, like, four assists and four goals? Some dreadful crap like that. Did not fit the system, and we had to get rid of him at some point. And he, was, of course, sat on 400 grand a week. We had to get rid of him. And I, I'm trying to think here, what is Chavi thinking? Because if, if we're loaning De Jong, that tells me we're signing Bernardo Silva. Because ain't no way in hell... We're loading out De Jong and not signing Bernardo. That for me makes no sense. And what's Chavi's thinking around uh, about this as well? I mean, of course, Romero is, is not saying, "Oh, the done deal is gonna happen." He's saying it's a possibility. So, when it blows into much of proportion, Romero also came out saying that Manchester United, Chelsea, and Bayern Munich are in the race to sign Frankie De Jong. The player must decide his future this week. We'll wait and see. I guess we'll come back to this option when he decides his future and if he decides to leave. But 
Frankie, man, I am begging you to reduce your salary by like 30%, man. It's not even that much. Just take one for the team. Everyone's done it over the past few years. Now it's your turn. I think, of course, Chavi backed him a lot over the past week in the media. Chavi wants to keep the player. All the player has to do is just reduce his salary. We'll wait and see, man. But I would say keep a big eye on the Frankie situation, of course. If he wants to leave or that he refuses to leave and refuses to take a salary reduction, the club will force him out. So this low move to Bayern Munich could be an option. Apparently be a low with the buy option. They'll cover the full salary and maybe at least 75% of it, something like that. Continue Operation 2.0. We'll wait and see. But again, I think he'll make his decision probably before the game this weekend. I would probably say after the ALS charity match against Man City as well. So we're probably looking at Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We'll get that decision on Frankie de Jong. But he'll have to make a decision at some point this week. Now, another midfielder who could possibly and most likely probably will leave the club on loan this summer is the new signing, Pablo Torre. Now, Sport broke the news. They came out saying that Xavi and Pablo Torre will together decide this week whether he will stay at Barcelona this season to mainly play for Barcelona Athletic or leave on loan. Racing Santander and FC Andorra are the best placed team to sign him currently. Candice here came out saying that Pablo Torre will 99% return to Racing Santander on loan this summer. Fabrizio Romano came out saying that Barcelona are seriously considering to loan up Pablo Torre back to Racing Santander until 2023 for one season and if it will happen, it will be happening at some point this week. Alberto Rogue and Juan Martin from Relivo came out saying that Pablo Torre has made the decision that if he does leave on loan, it will 100% be going back to Racing Santander. There will be of course no buy option. He prefers to play for Racing Santander in the second division instead of Barcelona Athletic in the third division so that's him looking for minutes I completely understand why he's looking for that, that sort of move and finally Jordan Miro came out saying that at the moment there is nothing between Pablo Torre and Reyes Nandere for a low move it is a real option though but Xavi and the player will wait until the end of this week to make a decision so uh, no decision has been made yet on uh, Torre going out alone, but it looks pretty much guaranteed that if he does leave on loan, it will be going back to Racing Santander in the second division. But again, the decision has not been made yet. What I think about it, I think I see again pros and cons. Pros being you go out, play regular minutes, first team, uh, you know, minutes week in week out in a second division as well as so the third division. My con is. You're not training with Barcelona. I think training week in week out with the first team is very, very good for your development. But of course, like Chavi said in the press conference last week, there won't be that many training sessions this season because of course we're going to be playing, 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 rest, training, playing, rest, training. So you get like what? one or two training sessions a week instead of you know getting three or four so i understand it from that perspective as well so we'll wait and see what happens but at some point this week chavi the club and pablo torre will decide whether another player will leave on loan this summer or not and if he does of course 100 percent it will be going back to racing santander now on the topic of loan moves of course a player that's currently out on loan on paper from barcelona is of course Antoine Griezmann. Now, as you all know, uh, Atletico Madrid do have the option to buy him at the end of the season for 40 million euros. But the option becomes mandatory if Griezmann plays 50% of the matches for 50% of the entire season. So all the matches in the season for Atletico Madrid, if he plays 50% of them for 50% of the minutes, the option gets uh, activated by uh, Barcelona to Atletico Madrid to make the buy option on the loan a buy obligation. But as you've probably all seen over the past two weeks, Atletico Madrid are not using Antoine Griezmann. They're not starting him, they're not playing him. He's coming on the last 20 minutes. And all signs are pointing to the fact that Atletico Madrid do not want to pay 40 million euros for Antoine Griezmann. Diego Simeone and the Atletico Madrid board want to keep him, but they don't want to pay 40 million. They want to pay around 20. Now, firstly, Relivo came out saying that if Antoine Griezmann, of course, is available and he plays 50% of the time available this season, Atletico Madrid will have to pay Barcelona 40 million euros and purchase him on a permanent basis, something they are not planning to do and are unable to do as well at the moment but if Griezmann plays less than 50% of the time available and the buy option does not become mandatory and Barcelona will have to pay his salary 20 million euros for the remaining year of his contract 
with Barcelona. The possible solution to this is as follow. Either Barcelona and Griezmann agree to for a pay cut in case he returns to bear the 20 million euro salary, or Barcelona and Athletic Madrid negotiate to reduce the amount of the clause already talks of around 18 million euros plus 2 million euros in variables, or an agreement to sell him if a good offer arrives. The agreement to sell him for around 20 million euros will not entirely be a loss for Barcelona as they would save around 20 million euros for the remaining year of his contract in salary with the club. Griezmann himself wants to stay at Athletic Madrid and properly prepare for the World Cup. Athletic will want to keep him as well, but not for 40 million euros. It remains to be seen if the solution can be found. So again, Atletico Madrid want to keep him. They're happy with him, but they don't want to pay 40 million euros for him. They want to pay 20. So now you're thinking, oh God, the reason comes back next summer, our wage bill will be completely fucked. He'll be coming back. 20 million euros salary on the wage bill. It's going to be a catastrophe for Barcelona. But again, the season is long. I think I think Barcelona Atletico have to have some sort of agreement that look you're, you're gonna have to pay 40 million euros for him because we're giving you a hundred million euro player for 50 million euros. Of course, they paid a 10 million euro loan fee, five million for last season, five million for this season, with the option, of course, to buy it for 40. It becomes mandatory. So I'm not too worried about this Griezmann case. It is of course a bit early in the season, but again, the signals are not too good. From the Barcelona perspective. Now, Sport came out saying that at the club, they are worried about Griezmann's situation and believe that Simeone was given orders from the board not to start the player. If Griezmann, of course, plays 50% of the matches he's available in, I think we should have the blah, 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 as you all know. For the match account as a Griezmann appearance towards a buy obligation, Griezmann must play a minimum of 45 minutes in the game. Of course, over the past few against Atletico Madrid, he's been only playing around half an hour. Last season, he played a minimum of 45 minutes in 81% of their games. Games, but at the beginning of this season, the statistics started to decrease. So Barcelona think that look, the Atletico Madrid board are telling uh, Simeone not to start Griezmann. It was up to Simeone. He'd be starting more. He'd be playing more regularly. Again, in the past, I think three games they've played, he's come on exactly within with half an hour to go in the match. So. Let's wait and see. I'd say let's wait until now, until January, and see how it goes. I think right now, probably too early to, to call. Maybe this athletic would attack to scare Barcelona. Maybe renegotiate the, the fee right now. I'm very, very confident we will not see Griezmann in a Barcelona shirt again. I don't think he'll return to the club. I think maybe he may return next summer for like a little bit and then go straight back to Atletico Madrid because we're reaching agreement with them. I think Griezmann wants to keep. Uh, Griezmann wants to stay at Atletico Madrid. Diego Simeone is in love with the player and wants to keep him as well. Atletico Madrid want to keep him as well but not for 40 million euros. We'll wait and see. Again, I'm fairly very confident that he will not play for Barcelona again. The way I see it, the only question is right now is how much are we getting for Griezmann? 40 million euros or 20 million euros? Now the final topic that I want to discuss before I end off this video is give you guys a fitness update around the first team at Barcelona with only one update and that is on Ansu Fati. Cat Radio have come out saying that right now Ansu Fati would be ready to start matches at any moment. The coaching staff is very happy with his physical response, although they will remain cautious with the player. So apparently, Ansu Fati has not been fully fit to start matches. That's why he's on the bench against Real Sociedad, against Rayo Vallecano, and also in preseason as well. But now, fully fit, 1000%, ready to go. But again, the coaching staff will still be a bit cautious with him. So, Keep that in mind when we're coming up to lineups for this weekend. Think about Ansu Fati starting or not. He's still not 100% fully fit to start a game. I would say right now he's probably you know 99%. But again, he will get there at some point. And once he is fully fit, we all know he'll be firing this season. So that was my reaction to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like. And of course, leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed. But the main thing I want to first of course, is on the acquisition of the new full backs firstly who do you think will sign at left back secondly who do you think will sign at right back thirdly of course on the exits of a memphis dest frankie what do you think will happen with that also on the loan of pablo torre would you give the green light or not and finally your thoughts on the antoine reason case and what do you think will happen in that situation as well and of course make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already and i'll see you guys next time on the channel take care and forza barca